Today, we're going to talk about monster fish. It's been on my topic list for over a year, and in general, I don't want to talk about it, only because what I found in the store over the years working at the pet store was that those who wanted to learn about them never kept monster fish anyway. Those that bought monster fish didn't want to learn about them. But I do like talking about them because I, I very much enjoy large fish, not all large fish. Um, I particularly am drawn to the ones that aren't aggressive. You know, I've kept a lot of different things over the years. You know, before I was on YouTube, I actually got my start in monster fish keeping. I had on the monster fish keeping forums, learned lots of things that, you know, mostly a lot of these fish are very, very difficult to keep what I consider morally in the aquarium hobby. Everyone's morality is going to be different there. Some people think, you know, a red tail cat in a 75 gallon tank is fine. Some say 200,000 gallons, you know, and all in between. I would say things are going to get over a, f well, like a foot to 14 inches I consider monster fish. So the reason I picked that is because that's kind of over the size of like a 55 gallon and would be kind of cramped into a 75 gallon being 18 inches front to back on a 75 and only about 14 on a 55. You know, some fish like an Oscar, very popular in the hobby, not always considered a monster fish because it takes so long for it to actually max out at that full, you know, 14, 15 inch size. Same with a lot of the uh, Central and South American cichlids. They get large, but it takes so long to get there. They don't normally fit in that monster fish category. Whereas something like a red-tailed catfish can hit that 18-inch mark in under a year easily if you're trying to. When you look at the statistics of people who buy these fish, we all start with, I've got X amount of a size of aquarium, right? And it's just a temporary home to quarantine and grow it out a little bit. We all have the intention of, well, don't worry. When my next paycheck, when Christmas comes, when um, tax return time comes, I'm going to get that large aquarium. I'll get it when I need it. And what we find is far too often that time either doesn't come or someone gets bored of it. And I, I definitely fall into the camp of I get very bored of the very large fish. And it's because a lot of times they're not compatible with other stuff. Or you think they are and it's not working out. That happens quite often because as we get these large fish or, well, we start out with these smaller fish. They're compatible and we, we usually pay a good amount of money for them. We seek them out and they're amazing. And then as they kind of get bigger and let's say this 300 gallon tank, now they're starting to fight a little more and they're having problems and it's hard to get food. And so then you start to making, you have to start making decisions. And so that's usually where we don't end up with enough large aquariums. And I've seen a lot of people really try well, uh, but it, it's, it's difficult. So the thing to know before you really get into them is try and get yourself like a wet pet. So like Murphy, Ladybird, these are, these are very large fish long term, and I'm only aiming to keep one. Well, now it's two, one at the store and one at home, uh, as opposed to monster fish community tanks. You gotta ask yourself, do I wanna wrap up my Saturdays or Sundays maintaining a large tank for one or a couple of animals? At the beginning, we always say yes. It's like, of course, this thing's amazing. Long term, though, it ends up being a lot of work, and it's it's on a curve. Like your your three inch red tail catfish is super easy to take care of, right? You throw some food in, it eats it. It can eat stuff the size of its body. It's amazing, and it gets growing and growing. You give it a little bigger tank now. It's up to a fifty five. Still amazing. When you start getting into hundreds of gallons, then all of a sudden you get the same like interaction where it's eating and stuff, but the cleaning time keeps going up. A lot of times, that's where I find the drop-off starts happening when it's like, okay, you've already got it in a 125 or 180 gallon, and it's got to go to a bigger tank. Are people willing to spend the thousands of dollars and then the maintenance time to keep that fish? Most people go, well, you know, I'd actually like to trade it in and get uh, something else. That's where the wet pet comes in. Like, really try and find something you fall in love with that you're going to set up a forever home not that you have to have it right away, but you should definitely know where's it going to go? Do I have the money set aside? What is my end goal in mind? That's the you know, unfortunately the sad story about arowanas. They jump all the time because the aquariums aren't large enough to house these fish. It's only a matter of time before they bounce out of there. Working at a pet store every day, 
someone's calling up or asking, do you have any arowanas? Whether they're intending to buy that day or not, they're just a very likable fish. They're cool, but in the right environment. I've done a lot. I really do like monster fish. I, I marvel at everyone else's monster fish. For me to do it right, I can only keep a few. We eventually want to upgrade uh, Murphy's tank, right? Another giant tank's got to go somewhere. We might have to pull that tank out. Whereas we got to build a pond from to live in while we set up the new tank it takes at least a few days. And on average, you know, unless you've already bought your house and things like that, we move every three to five years or whatever it's going to be, you change jobs, all that, and it becomes really hard to actually move, you know, your 70-pound red tail catfish or, you know, your school of bala sharks. Usually you can find something that's in a monster fish size in a smaller package. Sure, is a pea puffer cool? Yes. Is a mabu puffer a different style of cool? I, I think so. But if I couldn't keep them, I would just keep a smaller puffer. And I think that's what people should really focus on. One of the bigger problems is a lot of these monster fish will have very big spawns. And so, you know, like let's say red tail cats, if I can buy them at $2 a piece, if I want to be irresponsible, I bring in 100 of those and I sell them at $10 each. And now there's 100 red tail cats in my local area. And that's what happens is how is that? anything but a problem. When a hundred red tail catfish enter a local population, it's going to slam all the stores and, and there's just not, there's not going to be thousand plus gallon aquariums, a hundred of them laying around in a local area like that. So that's kind of what happens. And we try really hard to not sell things where we think there's not going to be a good chance of it living its life out there. I would not have sold a Mabu puffer to me because I'm just a guy that worked at a pet store and I've been lusting after one. I had a 300 gallon aquarium, but that was it, you know? And I, yeah, I knew stuff, but I don't know that the 23 year old version of me or whatever it was, 25, I don't know that I'm the poster child for like, that guy will take a great or take great care of this puffer. I don't think that was probably me at all. Uh, it worked out though. And so then I always think about like, you can't always know, you gotta kind of go with a little bit of you know, you got to give people a chance, but there are sometimes when you just know, when they're like, go ahead and give me that Mabu puffer, six African cichlids, that red tail, and uh, that saltwater clownfish. Like, obviously, you know, that's kind of a train wreck, but if you do have to uh, move, give it up, whatever's going to happen, and, and we've heard it all, right? I have to move. I lost my job. I'm getting a divorce. I broke up with my girlfriend. This is happening. I'm having a kid now. What is my plan for this fish long term, even when something goes wrong in my life? That's really what you got to think about because it's really hard to find them a good home. And whatever you do, don't release in the wild. I've, I've seen that happen. Please don't do that. We hope you enjoyed this video. We actually picked another one that we thought you might like, so click on it right here.